Lots to talk about in the tropics today, so I'm glad you checked in with us here for the hurricane briefing on MyFoxHouston.com. We have a special guest from Weather Insight and Wilkins Weather Technologies. Aaron Studwell is a senior meteorologist there, and he's going to tell us all about some tropical systems that we're monitoring in the Atlantic. Aaron, thanks for being with us. Good to be here today. First, uh, nice to have you. First, a quick tour of what we're going to be talking about here with a look at what's happening uh, initially in the Gulf of Mexico. So far, so good there. No tropical systems, but there is a tropical wave that we're going to be going in depth uh, into in just a moment. That's moving past the eastern Caribbean. And then two systems, tropical depression number two, as well as a strong tropical wave moving off of the African coastline. So let's begin in the area which is closest to Texas, Aaron, and that is in the uh, lower right-hand portion of the screen, a tropical wave in the Caribbean. This is something the National Hurricane Center has been watching for a little bit. Uh, they're putting a 30% chance of formation on this over the next 48 hours. Uh, conditions look a little bit more favorable as it moves into the Western Caribbean, and a few of the forecast models do take it as a system into the Gulf of Mexico uh, early part of next week. Uh, what are the prospects for it becoming something that folks in Houston would have to worry about? I'd say less than 20% right now, although this is a time of year where we're watching for this kind of development to happen. So uh, it's definitely worth watching Fox 26 over the weekend and keeping an eye on the weather and uh, the, the local advisories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what's interesting is the models have been picking up on it, but, but sort of weak, either an open tropical wave or maybe a weak low. But those water temperatures in the Gulf are getting pretty warm. Right, and then you know that the forecast models in advance of this, and the upper air flow looks uh, pretty favorable for formation, nothing to really knock it down. Mm -hmm. So as it gets closer to the coast, it'll start encountering more and more warm water. Mm -hmm. And this is the first storm of the system, so it'll be a time for things haven't been churned up. There'll be a lot of good, deep, warm water for mm -hmm. it to feed off of. So if it happens, we're talking about maybe Sunday or Monday? Sunday will have a much better indication, but mm -hmm. we'll kind of watch it through the weekend and going into uh, Sunday and Monday, as you said. Okay, good. Well, we'll continue to monitor that. Tropical depression number two uh, is out there. You can hardly see it, though. Uh, this, this one... We, doesn't look like it's going to develop too much. No, and it's amazing how much this has changed over the last 24 hours. It was a very impressive system yesterday morning. It ran into a lot of drier air ahead of it and has really kind of knocked it down. Upper level flow has not been favorable. Uh, uh, at Weather Insight, we're really kind of backing off the development of this storm. Uh, but it's really kind of priming the way and paving the way for the next storm we're going to talk about. But uh, staying on TD number two, you were showing me yes. one of the extended computer models a few minutes ago that it might actually stay together as a weak tropical wave and, and have the potential of reaching the Gulf. Yeah, and that was kind of, I think, surprising to both of us. Yeah. And uh, it's a situation we're going to watch. I don't put a lot of credence into it. It's mm -hmm. like the first model we've seen it into. Mm -hmm. But it's a situation we'll definitely, it's, again, the time of year, and it's been such a slow season so far. I hate to say it's going to kind of have to make up for it. Mm -hmm. But it's a situation where, you know, it will be wa worth watching. Okay, well, we'll keep an eye on that. Here is a look at the particulars on uh, what's a very weak tropical depression out there. TD number two winds 30 miles per hour and uh, moving to the west at nine. Again, you can see it's almost 4,000 miles from Galveston. Keep in mind, this cone of probability you're looking at there is representing what's probably going to be a very, very weak system that might be dissipated by then. The computer model forecast on the system also continue to show it moving to the west initially and then either curving to the north or some of them show it staying to the west. If it stays on the southerly track, that green line there, um, then it could be something that we'd have to monitor a little bit more closely for uh, potential to enter the Gulf. Now, uh, Aaron alluded to earlier, a much more powerful and vigorous system which is moving off, has moved off the African coastline and passing to the south of the Cape Verde Islands. This one is the one that's going to be interesting in the next few days. Yes, and this is a storm we've been tracking, or potential storm, now, a, now finally a storm, uh, for about a week. It's been in the computer models. The computer models have been very bullish about taking it up across the uh, northern part of the Caribbean and towards mm -hmm. Florida. This far out, it definitely is a possibility that the Gulf of Mexico is, is a potential threat. Yeah, but it would still be a week and a half or something like that? We're looking at approaching the Bahamas about a week from tomorrow. Yeah, so, you know, guys, we're still talking about something that's very, very far off, uh, that uh, is something that we have a long time to watch, but of all the systems we've seen so far this year, that one's probably the one that has the most potential. Yes, and it's one that definitely has the market talking the most and get definitely the most excitement. Um, it's a situation now where we're seeing a load pressure develop right on, kind of on schedule for the forecast models had it. Mm -hmm. So now we're watching this thing a lot of the dry air that was ahead of it has now been kind of circulated out mm -hmm. by tropical depression too. 
tropical depression two didn't stir up the water enough mm -hmm. in a situation where it's going to say now there's no warm water on top. Mm -hmm. Shears. Uh, very favorable, mm -hmm. and we're actually starting to see in recent analysis upper level flow becoming very tropical in nature. Where we're actually starting to see an outflow, which yeah. uh, to me is a little early in the process mm -hmm. almost mm -hmm. for a Cape Verde storm. Yeah, it's really starting to look pretty impressive. So, uh, and you can see in terms of what Aaron was just saying, the outflow, those the the high sort of thin wispy clouds on top are starting to sort of move outwards, like fanning outwards. And usually, you know, like you said, the shear is low, and that's an indication that. Uh, the storm is vented properly, and it, it, it might blow up here pretty yeah, soon. That ventilation is, is critical yeah. for all development. Yeah. And there'll be some other indications we'll be watching, and you will be in communication with you guys. Definitely, yeah. And that's why we have you know, uh, Weather Insight and Wilkins Weather Technologies as our forecast partners, because uh, you know, they really are 24-7 you know, watching yes. these systems and keep an eye on, on the markets, too. So thanks very much, Aaron Studwell from Weather Insight, for joining us today. And, of course, we'll continue to monitor that system. We'll have the latest uh, tomorrow for Friday here on MyFoxHouston.com. Come